developer at High Point Global, a role that includes designing and programming <coughs> e-learning modules, as well as graphic design for other corporate meetings. He's a husband, a father, and an autism advocate. Robert discovered he was autistic in his 20s and used the skills he's developed in Toastmasters to help others develop empathy and understanding for the autism community. He recently wrapped up a term as president of Toast Point Global and is their current vice president of education. Robert Smeltzer, exercise your courage. Exercise your courage, Robert Smeltzer. I'm so excited to be with you guys again. I was telling Rafael that just before we started tonight that if there were any club in the area that could convince me to be a member of two Toastmaster clubs, <laughs> it would be this club. I'm very grateful that you invited me back for your open house again this year, and I'm going to make a promise that I'm going to try not to go 11 to 12 minutes like I did last <laughs> <laughs> How do you define courage? Oh, that's not rhetorical, by the way. Would anyone like to share, how do you define courage personally? Okay, Tom. Overcoming your fears and being able to do something anyway. Okay, doing something by overcoming your fears. Chris? Doing things that you're afraid of or actually, but actually doing them, not thinking about it, but going for it. Okay, going for it even though you're afraid. Those are fantastic. My speech is done. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> The interesting thing is, a lot of people I talk to who are new Toastmasters or who are thinking about joining Toastmasters or are just people I'm mentoring through work in general and maybe needing to get ready to do a presentation at work, they think of courage kind of the way the Cowardly Lion did. Do you guys remember the Cowardly Lion? Yeah. Have you ever read the Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum? If not, maybe you've just seen the 1939 movie. <laughs> right. And so you've got this cowardly lion. And he thinks, I'm afraid of everything. I'm terrified of everything. So I'm going to ask the wizard to give me courage. But there's a tragic mistake the cowardly lion makes. And that is he doesn't realize something extremely important. And that's that he already has it. He already has courage. In both the book and the movie, the lion acknowledges something that he's afraid of out loud. In the movie it is, I'm scared to go into the witch's castle to rescue my friend Dorothy. Uh, incidentally, side note, this is my side note position. <laughs> There are a lot of differences between the book and the movie. However, there's one that actually bothers me. As much as I adore the movie, <laughs> in the book, no one is around to save Dorothy. Dorothy saves herself and then saves her friends. In the movie, they disempower and damsel Dorothy. And I blame the Disney princess movement, except that hasn't actually started yet. <laughs> Back on track. Despite the fact that the lion says, I'm scared to do this, he goes into the castle and he helps rescue Dorothy. This is courage. Courage is not the lack of fear, as some people think. Courage cannot exist where there is no fear. Courage needs fear. Courage is acknowledging your fear and choosing, and choosing to act despite it. Fear may not go away, 